Hey friends, how's it going? Welcome to another video here. Um, it's been a while, so I'm doing a uh, backyard orchard tour video today, just so you guys can see the fruit trees and see, um, see the updates on the fruit trees, see how they're doing. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, and just so you guys kind of have a feel of my location here, um, that's west over that way. And I'm on a slope. The entire property is is on a slope. That's why you see these retaining walls here. It's a little flat right here. And then it starts sloping down again. So of course that's east over there. Sunrise right now is right around there somewhere. And I'm located here in Vista, California in climate zone 10. And let's start with the guamuchil tree first. It's, it's the first tree you see when you're walking down. There's the guamuchil. It just flushed out all this new growth. And you can see it's putting on some tremendous size. It's been in the ground about three years now maybe four i'm not exactly sure i've only lived here a total of five years though um there's some of the flower buds here's some more and then right here here's one already um opened up they're not very attractive flowers at all um, I do enjoy the fruit though and if we keep on walking down this is just a little cara cara orange tree this is uh, some type of a uh, purple fig the figs were already here when I when I moved in so I'm not exactly sure what varieties they are now oh, there's a nice fig down here and then on this fence is a passion fruit vine which is uh, starting to flower this passion fruit vine um, or most varieties pretty much fruit throughout the year this is a fig tree covered in passion fruit. But um, we, I do get a couple big um, harvests uh, each year. And then after that, you just get a few here and there. And here's some avocado trees. These are actually pretty newly planted avocado trees. And I just put the irrigation on them about a week ago so no maybe two weeks ago yeah it's been two weeks so they're starting to get nicer they were struggling a little bit i just wasn't taking the time to water them enough because i had to do it by hand but now they're they're bouncing back you can see the nice growth on them this is the the reed right here that is a uh, surprise haws this is a pinkerton right here that is a lamb haas, and then the small one over there is a Mexicola. All right, so let's take you around. There's the middle area. Let's take you around the outside perimeter of the property. Here's a four and one apple tree. Look at that. That branch is falling over from the weight of the apple, so I'm going to have to do something about that. Ooh, these Dorset Goldens are putting on a, a little bit more size. Ooh, that's the biggest one right there, probably. Four in one apple tree. It's got four varieties grafted on it. But the Dorset Golden is the one that does the best. And these are three plum trees. There they are. Here's 
Here's one plum. And here's a few more. These are the um, Santa Rosa, Burgundy, and then Sweet Treat uh, Plueri in the back, a plum cherry hybrid. This is some kind of um, apricot hybrid right there. And um, this is a Fuyu persimmon. It looks really beautiful right now with all this new growth. And this tree produces a ton of fruit for its size. So much that I even feed some to my rabbits. They love them. And this is a little um, strawberry guava tree right here. If we get closer, you can see it's about to start uh, flowering. And then I've got a some some variety of passiflora growing up this um, palm tree here. You can see some of the fruit developing there. These are not too good eating, but I mean they are they are sweet. My wife likes them. There's some more over here. And these you definitely, if you want fruit, you gotta go around hand pollinating them. And it's as simple as going to the flower and just going like this. That'll pollinate it. And these have a lot of pollen actually. All right, we'll keep going. Oh yeah, there's a 20th century Asian pear. There's um, three guava trees right there. Those are all like white varieties of guava. There is a bear's lime right there. That's um, blood orange. Mango with some mangoes developing on it. couple more orange trees and then this is a pretty cool one this is a Costa Rican guava right here or cast guava I believe they call it there's a flower right there and there was a see let's I don't know if fruit will develop fruit should develop right here But it's um, first time it's flowering this much. So we'll see if I get to try the fruit from, from that guy pretty soon. Yeah. This is just a Meyer lemon. And over here, this is another cool one. This is a, a key apple. Um, this one hasn't fruited yet, but I tried them over at um, Exotic uh, Rare Fruit Tree Nursery. They have a couple um, that are planted in the ground now and do provide fruit. Look at those huge thorns though. It's a tree native to Africa. And they say in Africa, they, they um, plant them as hedges around their farms to um, help keep the lions out. And I'm gonna walk back down this way. This is a mandarin that was grafted on a lemon rootstock. Um, but um, a sucker was left. This tree was already here also when I moved here. So somebody didn't remove all the suckers. One of them got real big and you can see it's got lemons on one side. This is the vanilla the ice cream bean tree here vanilla ice cream bean and this guy has been fruiting for the last couple years providing some really nice shade now too this guy's only been in the ground three years and it's grown really fast This is Yerba Santa, 
I don't remember what they call it in English, but it's a, uh, it's got, um, it's very fragrant. Hard to describe the, the smell though, but um, it's used in some traditional Mexican dishes and soups and things like that. And actually my mother-in-law put it in some fresh salsa that she made the other day and it gave it a pretty good flavor. Yerba Santa. And then this is my largest um, guava tree that I have. This one was also already here when I moved here. Guavas are one of my favorite fruits. And then we've got the Pakistan mulberry right here. Look how big that guy's getting. And I've pruned it pretty aggressively a few times. And after it's done fruiting, I am gonna do some summer pruning on it just to control the size. Yeah? Yeah, hold on, okay? I'm on my way. Here's another view of the ice cream bean tree. And then right here is uh, another white guava variety. Real large green on the outside, white flesh. Very good tasting guava. And then this right here in front of me is a Suriname cherry. And it has not fruited yet. There's the Pakistan mulberry. Some bananas right here. Got some nice bananas developing right here. And I just harvested a, a rack of bananas, not from these plants. Very similar, these, these are my dwarf bananas, manzano. And I've got, up there I've got um, regular size manzano banana plants. There's the guava. Like I said, the Suriname cherry has not fruited yet. Um, it did flower last year, but it didn't set any fruit, so we'll see. Hopefully when it's more mature, it'll, it'll fruit. I'm sure it will. It's just going to take a little, a little while longer. There's Brianna. What's up, Brianna? What are you eating now? A mandarin? Cool. Hey, Alina. Hi. All right, so let's take a look at the Pakistan mulberry fruit. What fruit do you have? Do you have these are, as you can see, a lot of people are not familiar with these. They're, they're used to the smaller mulberries. These are large mulberries. Let me pick one. These are perfect right here. You want them really dark like this, like uh, almost black. <clears throat> That's gonna be really good. Very, very, very sweet. When they're really ripe like that, they're actually pure sweetness, no tartness. Although I do like the ones that are a little bit tart as well. Like the, um, like the Persian mulberry, I think it is. This guy's only been in three years, guys. These grow fast. Um, one cool thing I recently learned since I have rabbits and I was doing research on what I could feed my rabbits, you know, plants maybe around here, trees. And I found out mulberry leaves are really good for rabbits. And if you feed them um, mulberry tree leaves every day, that could make up 40% of their diet. So I was really happy when I found that out. And then these are Mexican sunflowers right here. One Mexican sunflower plant right here and another one down there. And these are also good to um, feed to the rabbits and all these leaves that dry and fall on the ground and just crumble into, I mean, see how easily I crumble that up? and it provides many nutrients. Provide really good levels of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium to the soil. It's, it's used as a chop and drop crop um, in some places. So they, 
whatever they're growing, they, they plant um, Mexican sunflower in between or around the farm or something. And then they, they um, once it's big, like, like this one, I already started chopping. Um, they, they chop it and they drop everything around the, around their crop so they can fertilize them naturally. This is a tejocote tree. This is a grafted tejocote. And this is a fruit that's used around Christmas time um, by many um, Hispanic people. That's not really why I got it. I just, I'm just a rare fruit tree collector. So <clears throat> um, I got it just because I thought it was a pretty cool, unique tree. Um, and there it is. We do use the fruit though. Yeah, the chirimoyas, chirimoyas, or cherimoyas. I've got two cherimoyas here, and then one African pride atemoya. And the African pride atemoya is um, growing a lot of new uh, leaves right now. And if we get closer, it's starting to flower too. Um. They say African Pride Atamoya is a good variety um, to have around if you don't want to have to hand pollinate. Um, they set fruit well without hand pollinating. Cherimoyas, on the other hand, hold on. <clears throat> These are the African Pride Atamoya fruit which I'm gonna have to harvest pretty soon now that the tree's flushing out new growth and starting to flower. I'm probably just gonna harvest these fruits and let the tree put its energy into the flowering. Um, although I don't have to harvest them all at once because then they'll ripen all at once. Um, so I'll probably harvest about two today and then two in a few more days. Um, Atamoyas, I mean Cherimoyas, when they're young like this, when they're young, the trees are still small. You can see these are only about 10 feet tall. Um, it's good practice to go ahead and do hand pollinating because then you'll get a lot of fruit. I got about 20 fruit on each one of these um, Cherimoya trees. I don't know if you can see very well, but there's actually two. Here's the trunk of one of them and then there's the trunk for the other one right there. Um, El Bumpo and Fino de Jete varieties. And there's some of the fruit right there. Let's get on the other side. Really delicious fruit, man. I, I like the Cherimoya better over the Atamoya. They're much sweeter. The thing I like about the Atamoyas is they tend to get larger and they tend to have a lot less seeds. So that's that's a plus for the Atamoya. But the flavor, these guys right here. El Fino de Jete and El Bumpo. And you know what? Really, I don't I can't tell the difference between the two. I mean they taste almost identical. Mature large trees, you don't really have to do hand pollinating. They'll produce fruit without it. Because my sister has one, or had one, um, in Fallbrook. Fallbrook, California is also a great place to grow um, fruit trees. Um, and it, was, it must have been at least about 15, 20 years old, and it would produce a ton of fruit. Ton, ton, ton of fruit with no hand pollinating. And they only had one tree. The Vista White Loquat. This is my favorite loquat so far. Most of the loquats I, I, I tried before growing up when I was a kid were probably all seedlings. And this one's a seedling as well. But it um, it, ca it came out almost identical to um, what, what the Vista White is supposed to be. You can see it's a yellow fruit. And... light light yellow um, flesh 
Really, really, really sweet. No tartness at all. And what else do we got? Oh, I forgot to show you guys the Rio Grande cherry. I've gotten one fruit off of it. Just one fruit. And it was really good. Rio Grande cherry. This is another really cool, um, more rare fruit tree. Rare here in California, of course. Um, Lamb has avocado, the pomegranate, and um, Malaysian guava. You can see I did some heavy pruning on it. Guavas can take aggressive pruning, no problem. Oh yeah, there's a champagne loquat back there as well. Those are really good too. The one I'm, I, I don't like a whole lot is Gold Nugget. I mean, they're good, but I prefer the Vista White and Champagne over Gold Nugget. Some milkweed. There's the caterpillars right there. There's one of them. There's a lot on this plant right now. And then the Jabo Tecaba. The Jabo Tecaba has not fruited yet. It's been here about four years. That's putting on some good size though. I'm really happy with how it's growing this year. It seems like this year it has put on a lot more growth. It's about... Gosh, it's about six feet tall now. It's gonna be really exciting when this uh, Jabotikawa finally starts fruiting. Looks really healthy. And then right behind me, there's my um, jackfruit tree. You know, I really didn't think jackfruit would um, fruit around here, but um, I went to a nursery here in Vista. It's called California Tropical Fruit Trees. And they have a, they have a website, look, look them up, California Tropical Fruit Trees. They are open to the general public on Saturdays. Um, well, I saw there's, I don't remember if it was just one, I think it was just one tree planted in the ground there with um, huge jackfruits on it. I mean, probably only about three miles from here in a similar, probably a similar microclimate, you know, kind of in the foothills a little bit. Um, so I said, hey, I can do it then. So I went and, and got one and it's, it's doing pretty good. It's growing sl slowly. It's growing slowly, but it looks, looks to be pretty healthy. This is another blood orange tree here. Lamb has avocado here. Let's go look at the, the fruit on it. I think there's still one. Yeah, look at that. Nice. Nice avocado there, and then two more up here. And we've been eating some of them. I like haws because they just hang on the tree for a long time. And then you can see all the new fruit. There it is. Some of the new fruit. Lamb haws. I just like lamb haws. If I could pick, if I could pick one, just one variety, it would probably be a, probably a lamb haws. They, they produce a lot of fruit and they're nice and bushy. They, they um, protect themselves from, from sunburn that way. Um, I just like them. They're very good tasting too. 
uh, Fuerte. Fuerte avocado here. There's some Fuerte avocados. When avocados are flowering and setting fruit, it's important to keep them hydrated. If they start stressing because they need more water, they will drop a lot of the a lot of the small fruits. Um, look at the reed. This is a reed right next to it. Look at that. Tons of little little avocados. Of course, it's not gonna hold on to all of them. That's another thing. If you are watering properly and all that, um, if you if they drop a lot of fruit, I mean, look how much this one has. I mean, it can't possibly hold on to all those. So I'm watering it properly and everything, but it's still gonna drop a lot of those little avocados. But a lot of them will stay and will develop. Here's a seedling avocado here. And then here's the other um, bananas I was talking about. These are the really tall ones. And you can see a huge rack right there. Well, where is it? Yeah, right there. Not real big. I think the one before was bigger actually. And then, oh, we've got a papaya back there. The Mexicola avocado. Wow, this one's getting pretty big. It's getting big, but no fruit again. Gosh, it didn't fruit last year and it looks like it's not gonna fruit again this year. I think I saw it flowering, I can't remember. Think I saw some flowers on it a couple months ago, one or two months ago, but maybe all that rain and wind. I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, oh, right here, the um, African walnut, I believe they call it, or weeping boar bean tree, something like that. I forget the name of this tree, but I do have a video on it. Um, but it flowered a little bit last year, but this year it looks like it's gonna flower quite a bit. Look at that. And I like this tree because it's a, it's a nitrogen fixer and it produces all these small red flowers which attract bees and hummingbirds and other beneficial insects. And these are this that's a seedling guava tree right there. Seedling guava and then that's a tropic white guava. Here is my animal section, my my bird section. And then there's my goats and my two sheep, but they get to go um over um to my neighbor's yard. Except today I was running a little late for work in the morning, so I just left them here today. Um, I'm growing some corn right here. And I just saw, wow, it's developing pretty fast. Growing um, cucumber and um, zucchini right here. We got some uh, chiles right here. Um, this is uh, some type of dwarf nectarine tree. And then I grew some radishes and other things right there. But yeah, these are all my animals, but this is not gonna be an animal video. I am thinking about, um, I might change the name to my channel. I'm just thinking about maybe SoCal Backyard Farm or something, cause that way I could do videos on my chickens, rabbits, goats, all of that too. And not, not just the fruit trees. Um, we'll see. But more bananas up here. These are the dwarf manzanos right here on that side. This is a regular size, um, really small, what do they call those really tiny bananas? I can't remember what they call them. Um, and then that's also a dwarf manzano right over here. 
This is a um, mountain soursop. Um, I'm gonna be grafting um, other uh, soursop on it later, once it's more established, once it's larger. Maybe I'll try grafting some cherimoya on it. Um, and then there's a seedling lime tree. And then if we go up this way, there is a lemon guava here, which I should probably water. This one's not on any type of irrigation, so I gotta hand water it. Nice lemon guava, those are very good. And then this is a really cool tree here, the black sapote. Black sapote tree. Which I got to try fruit from it when I bought it. It had some fruit on it. But that was about three years ago and it hasn't fruited ever since. It's flowered and everything and it just drops all the flowers. Um, I have really bad soil up here though. I should probably start bringing some rabbit manure. Um, maybe some fish fertilizer or some other things. I gotta do something, give it more nutrients to see if it'll um, set fruit that way. And probably more water too. This one's not on any irrigation, so that could be the reason too. Um, and then just another guava tree right here. There's some of the bananas um, we recently harvested. You can see they, they're pretty small. These are small little manzano bananas, but they're extremely good. Way better than store-bought bananas. And then over here on the other side of the house, I've got two big papaya plants. It's interesting with papayas because when they were um, smaller, I noticed um, this one over here was the male. You know, it had the longer stems and then a bunch of smaller flowers. Where this one, you know, started flowering pretty much right on the trunk. So I could tell right away male, female. Um, and then, you know, the female started fruiting for me. But then all of a sudden, the male started fruiting. And these are some really huge papayas man look at that i got big hands it's probably two of my two of my hands long or a little bit longer that's big and it's got some more up there and then this one these are really good this one has the more round ones and it's the same variety pretty interesting and um, the papayas did really good here on this location. South facing wall here. Uh, well, maybe south, southwest a little bit. So they stay um, pretty warm in the winter time. And um, since the, they're doing really good here, I decided to go get more papaya plants. And I like growing things from seed, but I tend to forget to water the seeds. I tend to sometimes completely forget that I ever planted them. So I normally just go out and buy small plants. I got these at Lowe's. You can see there's three. And you can grow them together like this. I'm not sure if I am or not yet. Um, probably not. I'll probably remove two of them. I'll just let them start flowering and pick out um, a hermaphrodite. And then just discard the other two. Or, or maybe try and transplant them. But papaya seem to do good right here in this location. And then I'm growing some carrots and some kale right over here. And another banana plant right here. And there's a view of the um, backyard orchard from up on the deck. And 
really proud of it really enjoy it and i hope you guys that are getting into gardening keep on doing it keep on watching videos like these although this was more of a tour video not really a how-to video um, but there are other channels on youtube with plenty of good information read up online but the best way you learn is by trying things yourself so this is all Vista, California here. Very nice day today. All right, friends. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour video today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next time.